one of the things that Aero News and Aero TV and, and our affiliates had to cover over the past year were the first forays of NTSB and FAA into the experimental community after a series of accidents involving the CH650 series uh, raised a number of questions. There were airplanes coming apart and of course that just gets everybody's attention for a number of reasons. However, there was a hard time pinning down causes, pinning down data, and pinning down a potential solution for why these airplanes were coming apart. We decided that under the circumstances it was time to get an update as uh, this aircraft goes into 2010 with a number of modifications and a number of recommended chase changes. Are there worse days behind him and is the future looking good for the CH650? Matthew, it, uh, as 2010 gets uh, going with a vengeance, I would imagine of everybody here, you're, you're not at all sorry to see 2009 behind you. It's been a long year and uh, I think the, the progress we have made is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we now have an airplane that has been probably the most proven in the world in terms of uh, structural load testing, um, just everything you can think about we have done to this airplane. Different authorities around the world have also done their own testing. And what we have now is just a, really an excellent uh, product, superior to what we had before. So we're really excited about the future. And uh, we're also very excited because we have an upgrade package that our customers have really endorsed. And we're doing everything we can right now to uh, make sure that these packages get installed in all the different airplanes out there, not just in America, but around the world. With over a thousand airplanes out there, it is a big project. But let's talk about what occurred and why, rather than what the rumor mill seems to suggest, because this one got political. NTSB got involved, FAA got involved, there's a grounding order, and it was pretty obvious from some things that a lot of the regulars, regulators didn't quite understand what it was they were trying to regulate. Well, that's very true, and um, when some of these accidents started to happen, um, you know, pretty well two years ago, uh, we started doing our own internal investigation. Uh, one of the first things we did is, um, based on the NTSB, where they, you know, they thought maybe we have a flutter issue or something of that sort, we hired a very high-end uh, team in Germany to do some flutter testing. We supplied them with uh, two airplanes, and they not just did the flutter testing in the computer, but also uh, on the ground vibration analysis and all that. And uh, their final report stated that we don't have a flooded problem with the airplane. It was black and white. We had the report posted on the website. Anybody can take a look at it. And after that, uh, we thought, you know, this is going to go away. But it didn't go away. And the FBA got involved with it. And uh, at the end of the day, what we had to do was something significant to not just uh, please the NTSB and the FBA, but also our customer base. And uh, that's what we did with this major upgrade that we now have. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine and best avionics for the best value. Now what does the upgrade entail? What is it that people are going to be doing with their aircraft? Well the upgrade kind of throws in many many different things not just that things that the FAA or the NTSB wanted but also a lot of things that our customer thought was important to have. We thought from a continued worthiness point of view there should be a lot of things added to the airplane just to make the airplane more safe. What we found out the, the mass majority of the accidents were from not the original build of the airplane or the original owner but from a ferry pilot or a second owner which means that there's possibly something they didn't understand about the airplane, something about maybe flying over VA in high, con you know, high, high wind conditions, uh, not properly maintain the airplane with our control cables are, are not properly tensioned, things like this. So just an accumulation of different things uh, is a possibility to the accidents. And you know, to this date, I don't have a report coming from the NTSB or the FAA or anybody else around the world stating that our, our flooded report that we got from Germany is wrong or faulty in any possible way. Yet, uh, we've had accidents and so we felt it was important to just put all these things together so then what we have now is a, um, a mass balance in the aileron for um, for you know preventing any type of flutter we stiffened up the wing significantly by adding a lot of channels in the wing to possibly prevent flutter or vibrations we've done the same thing with the flaps the whole spar area has been beefed up significantly not just uh, to meet uh, ASTM standards, uh, but to significantly um, you know, go over and beyond any standard out there. 
And we felt that was important because if our customers really are flying these airplanes uh, at limitations that they shouldn't be, uh, we need a tougher airframe. And that's what we've got now. So our, our concern now is people are going to say, well, this is an aerobatic airplane. We're going to do whatever we want. But the fact of the matter is it's not. And we've, we've beefed up certain parts of the airplane, but that doesn't make it an airplane that's got higher Gs now. Certain parts, absolutely. But oh, the overall airplane, you know, is, is not a, a 9G airplane by any means. So this is something that our customers have to continue to respect. And there's a lot of educating that we have to do out there. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. What's the downtime like for somebody who's going to be upgrading their airframe? How much work is it going to take to bring it up to spec? Uh, right now we're saying it's going to be between about 80 and 100 hours. Okay. So a lot of it is not doing the actual upgrade, it's, it's getting ready for the upgrade. So opening up the wings and putting the channels in the wings and that type of things and then you know painting and everything else. So the actual hands-on is not so bad, it's the preparation for the hands-on is to get the parts in there. That's, that's really the hardest part. Finally. What was your experience both with the FA and NTSB involved, but do they really understand the market and were they equipped to really, well, let's face it, were, were they undertaking uh, protocols and decisions that ultimately were beneficial to the industry? Well, you know, there's uh, the, the NTSB, I think, did a really good job in term, terms of trying to find out what the problem was. Um, if you look at the individual accident reports and this and that, um, over, the overwhelming thing is always overloading of the airframe. Uh, we don't see too much or, or any uh, flutter. Uh, so what is overloading of the airframe? That really did not help as much, but it did point out that you know, there's something there. Uh, they, sh they issued a letter to the FAA about a year ago saying that you know, the airplane should be grounded. And the FAA said, well, before we do anything, let's, let's see if there's uh, something behind this. And because you know, there are two different um, groups out there, um, the, the, the FAA had to do their own investigating and uh, what they found out is well the airplane is on the structurally on the weak side and if people are you know, really going over VA and things like this there's going to be a problem. Um, they couldn't really find anything on the flutter side because again I don't have anything from any authorities saying that we've got something wrong with that flutter report that we have. So that was not so much an issue for them but we still did the upgrade for you know flutter uh, the, the balance weights and this type of thing. Um, even though the report says likewise. So, you know, I think overall we have worked very closely with them. They work closely with them. And when the FE issued this SAIB, that was, you know, a questionable thing where, you know, are they stepping the grounds into the, uh, the experiment market and this type of thing. But the fact of the matter is we all want to fly safely up there. And, you know, if, if that's what it's going to take to, to get people to do the upgrade or, or you know, at least, at least um, you know, give a reason or an extra reason to do the upgrade, you know, that maybe that's what it takes. And ultimately, yeah, you know, every home builder experimental guy is a manufacturer himself and every airplane is unique that way. So, you know, does the FEA or anybody else have the right to tell them what to do? Maybe not, but, you know, if that's, again, that's what it takes to make a safe airplane out there, then, you know, that's what they got to do. And, and, you know, the EAA too, they have been very involved with this. And, you know, their main focus again is, you know, let's make sure we got some safe airplanes out there. So everybody has endorsed this upgrade package and everybody's trying to do everything they possibly can to make sure that every customer that owns one of these airplanes puts that package in there. Well, we wish you a, uh, a far less uh, tumultuous 2010 and good business. Well, thank you very much.